Oh yeah, because I bought 12 mascaras. Did you really need 12 mascaras? I mean, maybe you did. Hey everyone. So if you can't tell from the title, I am here to talk about my top five money saving tips. Um, this does have a corresponding blog post. I'll link it down below and you can check out my tips uh, written in my blog post as well. So I'm going to be reading some notes out of a notebook. So if you see me looking down, that's what I'm doing. So let's get right into the video. My first tip is to always use cash. So basically this can help with a lot of things. Um, you're going to be able to see exactly what you're spending when you're handing over 20, 40, 60 dollars, whatever you're using, um, instead of, you know, just using your credit card or using a debit card, you're not really paying attention to what is coming in and out of your account. Um, this also is going to help with not having credit card debt. Um, obviously there are times that maybe you do need a credit card, maybe you do online shopping, um, I don't know, things like that, possibly prepaying things, I'm not sure, but there are times where you might need a credit card. But if you're going to a physical store, the best way to not be spending money on things that you don't need to spend money on is to use cash. You're also then not going to be paying bank fees. Um, I don't know if all banks do this, but I know that there are banks that pay for every time you swipe that card. And so if you're not swiping that card because you've physically taken cash out of the bank, you're not paying those fees. And to take that tip one step further, um, you can write down your expenses. So every time you spend money, you can write it down in a little notebook or on a piece of paper, or even in your phone, and you can keep track of everything you're spending money on and what you're buying and where you're buying it. So, you know, you can look at that list at the end of the month and say, why did I go to, I don't know, the drugstore 12 times in a month? Oh yeah, because I bought 12 mascaras. Did you really need 12 mascaras? I mean, maybe you did but you probably didn't. So it's a good way to track exactly where your money is going. So my next tip is to use coupons. And <laughs> I'm not telling you to be like a crazy extreme couponer um, like they have on TLC where people have tens of thousands of dollars of products hidden under their bed or in their bathroom or in their basement. I mean, unless you wanna do that, by all means, go ahead, do it. Send me pictures, cause I'm obsessed with it. All I'm saying is that there are coupons available to help you even just take the price of your groceries or your shopping trips down $20. Um, there are coupons for everything. Let's say that you still live at home with your parents, but you pay for your shampoo and makeup items and personal care items. There are coupons for that, for shampoo, for makeup. I've even seen CoverGirl coupons. Um, there's shampoo for deodorant, for things like pads and tampons. Um, all kinds of things like that. Maybe you buy your snacks, like extra things that your parents don't pay for. There's always coup coupons for snack type items. And if you are older and you live on your own, there are tons and tons of coupons for things like food and household cleaning products, things like toilet paper and paper towel. And even I've seen coupons for like mops. So like there's coupons for everything. Now, I want to make sure that I also explain though, there are coupons that maybe necessarily you shouldn't be using. So for instance, my favorite example is every time I get a coupon insert, almost every time I get a coupon insert, I open it and there is a coupon for beans. I personally don't like beans, um, I don't eat them. Occasionally my fiance eats them, so I do sometimes keep the coupon and if he wants to get them, he can use the coupon to get them. It's usually like 50 cents off or something. So. I wouldn't take that coupon to the store and buy those beans because I'm not going to eat them and that would be a waste of my money. But if you like beans, then obviously you would take that coupon to the store and buy the beans. So you need to make sure that you're not just buying things because you have a coupon. That's not going to save you any money. If you, um, I don't know, have a favorite type of shampoo, yet you find a coupon for a different type of shampoo and you're not so sure if you're going to like it, but you buy it anyways because you have a coupon, that's not saving you any money if you don't actually use that product. So an extra step for that tip would be to use store coupons. So, you know, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, stores like that will have actual store coupons. So 40-50% off items, sometimes 20% off your entire purchase. So if that's somewhere where you like to spend money, um, you can always look online for those kind of coupons. Be careful though that you're not going, hey, I have a coupon for this store, I'm just going to go buy something because I have a coupon. 
that's not going to save you any money. There's also group buying sites like Groupon and Wagjag that sell coupons for all different types of services and products. Um, for example, I've gotten Wagjags for things like tanning. Um, when I used to tan, um, they would have like $20 and you'd get like $100 worth of tanning minutes. So things like that, it'll save you money. So if it's things that you're normally looking for that you pay for on a regular basis, always check on those websites to see if they have a coupon for something that you're interested in. So my next step is to create a budget. So basically you can take this as far or as small as you want. You can write down how much you make, your fixed expenses, um, you can have little categories of how much you want to spend a month on certain types of things. So you know, eating out, or shopping, or um, pet supplies, things like that, you know, you're going to have accounts of things that you need to spend money on. With writing a budget, you are going to see how much you're spending in each category. So you might need to cut out certain things like maybe not going to the movies as much or not going to fast food restaurants as much or possibly shopping. Um, maybe you're realizing that you're spending a lot of money on shopping and you're going to need to bring that budget down to a certain dollar amount of how much you're going to allow yourself to spend in a month. You could also do the envelope type system. I believe this is like the Dave Ramsey type system where you have accounts and you physically take money out of the bank and you put them into little envelopes and those envelopes will house the amount of money that you're allowed to spend on a particular category every month. So you would have things like groceries and like I said pet supplies, shopping, um, if maybe you have something that you pay for every month like lessons or the gym, things like that, you would have envelopes so that you would have the money in those envelopes ready to pay every month. My next tip is a side hustle. So this is really popular lately, you know, either having a second job or starting your own business online or starting your own business in the physical. Ideas for a part-time job might be getting a job at the mall or dog walking or babysitting. Um, it's also totally feasible to start your own job if you have some kind of skill or you know how to make things or you're good at you know, doing stuff on the internet, maybe you can, you know, start your own business, start your own Etsy shop, start selling things, you can go to fairs and make things, maybe you know how to cook and you can cook food for people. There's all different things that you could try and do to make a little bit of extra money. So to take this tip a little bit further, you could try selling your stuff. So if you have tons of stuff in your house, like I know a lot of people do, um, that you probably aren't using. You can go through your house and you know pick out all the things that you're not using and try and sell them. There are places like consignment shops where you can sell your shoes and your bags and your clothes. Um, most recently, uh, last weekend, I sold about $100 worth of clothes and accessories and that was $100 that I wouldn't have had. Uh, the clothes that the consignment shop decided not to take, I just donated which is normally what I would have done with my items anyways, so I made extra hundred dollars. You could also have a garage sale or sell things on Kijiji, which is like the Canadian Craigslist, so Craigslist in America, things like that. People are always willing to buy things from other people, maybe that they can't afford it in the normal terms, so they can afford it because you're selling it for a cheaper price. So my fifth and final tip is meal prepping and planning. On Sundays, I sit down and I make a list of the meals that I want to make, and I check my fridge and cupboards to see what ingredients I have to make those meals. So I make sure that when I go to the grocery store I'm not buying things that I don't need so that I'm not spending extra money and those that food is most likely going to go bad. On Sundays I also meal prep so that I'm making meals ready for myself to be able to eat so that I'm not going out and spending money on fast food. So using both these methods helps you save money. So to take this tip one step further you can do both so that you are planning the meals that you're going to eat as well as prepping some of them before the week starts so that you know maybe you get home late one night and instead of saying huh oh, I'm just gonna go buy you know a burger you know that you have food in your fridge that you can just warm up and that also helps to have healthy meals ready so that you're not eating junk food uh, maybe you'll just grab a bag of chips and eat it no you know you could have some chicken cooked in the fridge as well as some rice you can mix it up maybe put some corn and peas in it and then there's a meal it's fast and easy it's cheap and your food was ready so that you're not running out and spending money on crap. So that's my five favorite tips for saving money. Um, please leave extra tips down below so that we can share them and maybe I can make another 
five tips uh, for saving money video. Um, don't forget to check out my blog because I've written all these steps in a blog post. And I will also leave tips to my favorite money saving books down below. Um, you can either, you know, find these on Amazon, whatnot, or you can listen to them on Audible, which is one of my favorite things to do. So I will leave my link to Audible down below as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit that subscribe button because there's more great videos to come. And I will see you in my next video. Thank you. Not a Pepsi ad. Again, not sponsored by Pepsi. <laughs> Still not sponsored by Pepsi. I wish.